Little down, little down, little down. And then see if God lets you pick it back up again. <laughs> Maybe there's a snake in that stick. <laughs> he might tell you to come pick it back up again so you can go deliver a nation, or he might just tell you that you better step on that. <laughs> you better trample that serpent and scorpion underneath your feet there. Baba Louie. <laughs> hey, the fastest way to grow in the spirit is put, uh, put to death the deeds of the flesh by the Holy Spirit, surrendering to him. Yeah. Oh, man. And just meditate day and night on the living words of God. That means the prophetic words that people have spoken over your life that have the anointing on them and the word of God. It's written for us. That is like, that is God's love letter to us. How do you overcome the world? <laughs> By the word of your testimony. The word of God within your testimony. And through the blood of the Lamb. It's like the life of Jesus Christ is in his words. And you have the testimony of Jesus, don't you? That Well, that's the spirit of prophecy to break other people free. You've been set free. Why not just like uh, let other people know about that liberty? Hallelujah, man. <laughs> Jesus is the most fun person that you'll ever hang out with. And look, he's in your body. <laughs> you don't have to go to a Sunday morning um, cemetery or anything, you know. <laughs> it's fun though. I, I love hanging out with other believers. But sometimes it can just get so religious and repetitious. Like, you know, you're going to do the, you know, three slow songs and two fast songs to get a sermon and take an offering, you know. Didn't we do that last week? Isn't that right? <laughs> what about in the Bible it says, behold, they do a new thing, you know? <laughs> there was this one guy, he went to church, and I think a lightning bolt hit the altar and it split in half, and everyone got scared because God showed up. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. Come on, man. <clears throat> that's like the that's like the word of the Lord dividing soul and spirit. <laughs> Boom! The lightnings of God show up in the meeting. Everyone's scared. They don't know what to do. <laughs> so they did one the one thing that was that was that was, that was you know they you know, okay God searches for worshipers. Let's get someone to go worship or something. Cause I I ain't touching the ark, man. I don't want to get smitten by God. <laughs> Jeez. You know sometimes when you don't know what to do, the best thing you can do is surrender in worship. <laughs> First time worship was mentioned in the Bible was when Abraham was going to go, you know, sacrifice his son to the word of the Lord. <laughs> you know, counting that God would even raise his son from the dead because that was the son of promise. And God keeps his promises, but sometimes he'll pass our understanding just to, you know, through Abraham's obedience though. Man, how far are you going to go with God? Are you willing to lay down everything that God's given to you? But this is holy. God's gave it to me. Yeah. That's exactly what God asked for. And then, boom, just as he's about to, you know, sacrifice his son. And, you know, hold on, Abraham. God, I've already provided for myself a sacrifice. You know, and he got called the father of faith. What is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. He heard the word of God. But he acted in obedience to the word of God at the risk of his own life or the risk of his own son's life, which is basically his life. Cause I was like, you know, parents, like my, my child is my life. Now I got to look after this kid. I got to raise it. I got to love it, discipline it, you know, train it up in righteousness. <clears throat> oh man, he works in mysterious ways. And so like, yeah, the sacrifice that God had prepared it wasn't just for Abraham, it was for Abraham's seed. <laughs> it was for us. God sent forth the seed of his son. And it's also Jesus himself said, unless the seed falls, to the gra falls into the ground and dies, it abides by itself. But if it dies or something like that, it brings forth much fruit, which he was speaking of himself. Like he was the seed sent from God to go into the earth into three days and three nights into the heart of the earth. And then just burst forth this tree of life, bringing many sons into righteousness, bringing forth much fruits. 
Who was the fruit? While God sowed a seed of a son, he brought forth many sons. That's me and you in the glory. Hallelujah. Man, aren't you glad that Abraham obeyed God? <laughs> oh, God would have done it anyway, but still, man, that is such a high honor for Abraham. He was called the friend of God. I don't think there could be a higher honor than that. Could you imagine? Oh, wait, get, get out of the way. Here comes God's friend. God's friend. Whoa. A lot of people say they're the friend of God, but they don't even, where's the glory? <laughs> you know, Enoch walked with God and he was not. I remember this guy talking about his, uh, <clears throat> he saw Enoch's last step on the earth. And then Enoch just like, when he disappeared, he, this guy was standing with an angel watching Enoch's last step on the earth. And when he, Enoch disappeared, this radius of glory just exploded because the man was gone. So the, the, the glory that was resting on the man just went into the earth. And when it hit them, it was like a nuke bomb. Just poof, they buckled their knees, the angel too. That's how you know you're walking with God because there's a, there's a knee buckling anointing in our glory realm around you and through you. Remember when Jesus said, uh, who are you looking for? We're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am. They didn't, he didn't say, I am he. He just said, I am. Referring to the angel in the bush and the, I came down to bring you up, you know. <laughs> Prophesying Jesus who was, showed up, who came down to bring us up. He said, I am. There's no he in the original there. I am. And then, boom, they buckled their knees and hit the ground. It's not that because they were in reverence. It's because the power of God hit them. A true son of God walks in a glory realm. There's going to be knee-buckling glory. <laughs> I remember when I first met uh, this guy, David Hogan. Like, in the flesh. <laughs> face to face. With a true son of God. Before he even walked into the room. I saw the whole spiritual realm go, oh, it just bent. Everything bowed <laughs> to the realm of glory that he was carrying. All the demons, pew, the religious spirits, pew. and I just sat there listening to David Hogan for like two hours. Me and my wife just getting washed with waves of peace, waves of glory. Just, man, how do you know this guy's really from God? Is his doctrine accurate? No, the waves of glory, the waves of, you shall know them by the, you know them by the fruit. What is the fruit? Peace, love, there's love just good, pouring from this guy. The peace was just going right through me and my wife sitting in the chairs. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> not fruit of, well, he's got 20 disciples and he started 50 churches. That's not fruit. Cults do that. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. Love, peace, joy. You know, the, you know I'll go read it. And then uh, <laughs> it says he's he preached for two hours. And then he's like, if anyone needs prayer or something like that, and uh, I don't know, he put some oil on his hands and he's like, come on, who wants some, you know? So I went, I ran running up there. Like, man, there's more. <laughs> Let's go from glory to glory. And listen, I don't take courtesy falls. I remember my old days and going to the to the big meetings where, you know, the Sunday morning and they're pushing you back and hoping you're going to fall down so that makes them look spiritual or something. <laughs> I would never be the one falling down. I'm looking around. Everyone's falling down. Like, what a bunch of wusses, man. They're, I barely even feel the anointing. <laughs> Why are you guys like... Am I, am, I, am I like rebellious or hard to receive? I thought I was like the, one of the easiest to receive. I get wasted in my bedroom and cry with tears and visions and revelations and I come to the church and everyone's laying on the floor. And the, the guys just push, I want to push them back. What's the problem, dude? You know, <laughs> David Hogan. I go up to him and he's like, so what do you need, brother? What's your problem? I, 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 had, I had pain in my heart at the time. I said, yeah, it's my heart. I could barely talk though. Cause there was, there was like, God was just like, pouring through the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's like, oh, you're too young for that. And he didn't even, he didn't push me back. He just kind of went like this, like just a little tap. 
and boom, I just like, I flew back and these people, like that was it, I was gone. I thought rapture, maybe the rapture is real. We made, we made it, you know, and there's, I look over, there's bodies beside me and I'm like, I'm bawling my eyes out like a mature Christian on the ground. They throw a sheet on me and <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> It's like, man, how do you know this guy's a man of God? Because the God came through the man and it was tangible. I don't take courtesy falls, but I ended up on the floor, slobbering tears, snot, everything. And uh, that, was, that was fun. I can't remember why I said all that. <laughs> Test the fruits. You shall know them by the fruits. <laughs> you know. How do you know someone's dead in religion? Because all they have is opinions, it's quoting scriptures with argumentative. Uh, oh, here's something I put on Facebook the other day. I don't remember exactly how I worded it, but it's like the closer you get to God, it's the more you realize what people are going to say before they even say it. You see what spirit they're of, like, oh, don't even open your mouth. And then they open their mouth and it's just a bunch of scriptures to condemn you in a prideful spirit as they're accusing you of pride. <laughs> And you were just like in the, you were in the glory closet, <laughs> your prayer closet. It's the glory closet. And you come out dripping and then they, they get triggered. The demons in them get triggered and they'll accuse you of what's in them. So you don't have to accuse them back. He's like, okay, well, I guess. Uh, I usually just tell them, well, your comment says more about you than what it does about saying about me. <laughs> you know, keep, they'll accuse you of pride because they're full of pride. <laughs> You'll still say, you need more love. And I'll, yeah, I do. <laughs> you think I'm going to debate that? But they mean it in an angry way because they need more love. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. All right, I need, I need a sip of tea. See you guys later. <laughs>